Hello again, everyone. And today we are going to talk again about tripods. This video is sponsored by KNF Concept. I have been working with KNF Concept for a couple of years and they kindly sent me this tripod here, which I will come back to it later. I also have a playlist, you can find it here. This playlist is basically all the tripods that I have already tested. It also has some videos about cleaning and maintenance of tripods, so you should check it out. But this video here is about how to choose a tripod for photography. It's so difficult to find an appropriate tripod for your work. We know that in the market there are lots of brands, lots of different tripods, materials, sizes, heights, weights. You get overwhelmed by the amount of options available in the market. First of all, why use a tripod? Well, you can use a tripod for camera stability. If you want to do a long exposure uh, kind of photography or when you, um, you, are, you are in a condition where you want to slow your shutter speed, you can do the photography handheld. So in these cases, landscape photography, uh, astrophotography, uh, you will need a tripod. For studio work, um, you use a tripod for um, in order to get your camera at the same position just by changing the product. So the main advantage of using a tripod is that you can work with any shutter speed that you want. It gives you productivity, uh, repeatability, you can do merging um, HDR photos. So in order to do HDR, um, you have to have your camera at the same, exactly the same position. Uh, also for uh, focus stacking, you also want your camera to be in the same position. So those are the main advantages of using a tripod, but also it comes with disadvantages. So the main disadvantage is that you, you need to carry this, uh, depending on the tripod that you're using, it has, look at the size of this thing, you know, and also the weight, it's cumbersome, it's, uh, it's bulky, sometimes, depending on the tripod you're using, it's heavy, uh, and you, depending on the location that you are, uh, you have to carry it with you. If you are in a studio, you don't have to worry because you, the tripod will be standing there. You don't have to carry it uh, for long distance. But if you're hiking, doing landscape photography uh, and uh, you hike a lot, then you might want to consider uh, a lighter tripod. Most tripods are made either from aluminum, uh, aluminum alloy or carbon fiber. Carbon fiber tripods, they are lighter. They are good for you, for example, if you do a lot of hikes and if you uh, need to carry your tripod in a, in a trip, but it has a higher cost than an aluminum tripod. But the problem with the aluminum tripod is its weight. So it weighs more than a carbon fiber tripod, but it is more also more stable. If you're doing a studio work, you might want to consider using a cheaper uh, tripod, like an aluminum tripod, if you're not carrying it uh, for hikes, uh, long hikes with you. Another thing you need to know beforehand when buying a tripod is to know exactly what weight we will be putting over the, the tripod. If you uh, are using just an iPhone and you want a tripod, you can use, use the lightest and smallest tripod of all. Uh, or if you're using a mirrorless camera with a very light weight lens and almost no accessories. So you can use like this tripod here. It's very, very small. It's carbon fiber. Um, it's from KNF Concept. Um, I'll leave, it's on the playlist, this one. It's the BA-225. So you need to take into consideration what camera are you using? What is the weight of your camera? Uh, what are the lenses that you're using uh, or the range of lenses? What is your um, largest lens? And don't forget also about the accessories. So if you're adding an L bracket and then you, you're adding a lot of filters, 
uh, and also some accessories on your camera, uh, you might want to wait it all to take into consideration when choosing a tripod. You need to define the location or uh, where are you going to use your tripod. Do you use it only on a studio or do you go for a lot of hikes and travels and also uh, lots of different places? You travel a lot and uh, you travel by plane a lot. You go for long hikes. Also, you need to take this in consideration. If you do studio work and landscape photography and uh, let's say architecture photography, then you probably might want to have more than one tripod or one tripod that uh, try to fix it all. But I will tell you, it's very difficult to have one tripod that serves to all purposes. It's like a short blanket. You will gain in one side and you will lose on the other. Sometimes you, you need a sturdy tripod for uh, studio work, but then you also like to travel. If you take this tripod with you on your, uh, on your trips, on your hikes, it might wait a lot. So you might want to consider um, maybe using one tripod, uh, like one carbon fiber tripod that you can use both in the, um, in the studio and also uh, during your travels or your hikes. What is the height needed? If you're short, then you can go for a smaller tripod. But if you're tall enough, then you might want to consider a um, higher tripod. It will all depend on the work that you're doing. I have this tripod here from Artseas. It's the CS60C. Uh, this tripod I use mainly for landscape photography. And this tripod has a maximum height about here, around my neck. For most of my landscape photography, I either um, do it here or um, a lower height. If I'm doing uh, architecture photography, then I prefer to use another tripod, which has a center column like this one. This is from KNF Concept, is the SA254C4. It's a carbon fiber tripod, same as this one from Artsys. And for this one, I like to use the uh, central column to extend my height, because sometimes when I'm doing, this even has two positions so it gets really high about maybe a little taller than me make sure you know where most of the time will you be using your tripod another point to consider is the tripod weight so this tripod it weights nothing <laughs> almost one kilogram so it's very very light but it comes with a problem. This, uh, its legs are very thin and this will produce um, vibrations and it's not very stable if you're doing astrophotography work or long exposure photography or if it's on a windy day, then it's, it might not be appropriate for you. But it, it's the lightest one. It's the easiest one to carry. Look at how compact it is. And then we have the intermediate tripods, the SA254. It's um, 1.5, 1.6 kilos. Um, so it's an intermediate weight and it's also carbon fiber. Then you have this one, the 254T1. This is very, very bulky. Look at this. It's aluminum tripod, but it has above two meters height. So it, their legs extend really high, but it weights a lot. The one that I speak earlier, the Artsys uh, CS60C, uh, this one weights about 1.6 kilograms with the ball head. I'll come to uh, tripod heads in a bit, okay? Or you can get this one, this, this weights almost three kilograms. <laughs> of course, this is an art size um, AS80C. It's the heaviest of the tripods that I have. I used to do a lot of um, uh, long exposure photography, landscape photography with it, but it's so heavy to carry. 
That's why I moved to a lighter version, the CS60C. It's very heavy to carry and also it's cumbersome. Look at this compared with this. Okay? So it's much lighter, much easier to carry also. And then I asked KNF Concept, do you have any sturdy tripod for me to try out? And they sent me this one. This is the X284C2 carbon fiber tripod. I find it really, really good because it's carbon fiber, it's lightweight, it's about the same size as the Artsys CS60C. So about the same weight, a little weight. This is two, uh, 200 grams heavier than the Artsys, but I'm saying this with, it has a center column, which you can take it off. It's optional. So you can remove your center column and you can use the, your, your ball head closer to the base of the tripod, which provides so much stability. And then it weights about the same as the RTCs. So one thing to consider also is the, the ease of carrying your tripod. In order to carry this tripod here, uh, by the way, this is the RTCs CS uh, AS80C. Um, nowadays, I use it only for video work. As you can see, this is a fluid head. Uh, I use it most of the time for uh, indoor studio work where I need to uh, where I need to film me with some stability. But I don't use it uh, anymore for landscape photography. I can carry it on on a bag uh, because it's heavy. It's difficult to carry it on your on your bag on your backpack for our landscape photography travels i use a lot the artsys cs60c but now i'm starting to use the new one from knf concept the x284 c2 both are really easy to carry on your luggage on your backpack and i use this one the smaller one from knf concept uh, for uh, filming myself on the field because it's easy to carry. I can put uh, sideways on my bag and it won't uh, uh, it won't wait a lot. Another thing you should consider when buying a tripod is do I need a center column or not? So this one from KNF Concept they sent me it has a center column okay uh, you can use it um, all extended or you can use it somewhere in between. Or you can uh, remove it and do not use this a center column. The ideal tripod is one that you have the ability to have the center column or you can detach it for not using it and then it becomes lighter. Especially if you do landscape photography or when you do studio work or ar architectural photography where you need the extra height, then this solution is really, really good. So central column is related to the height. Uh, if you need stability for your photo, if you're doing long exposure photography or astrophotography, you might want to use it, the, the, your head, the tripod head, as close as possible to the base of the tripod. If you use it here, it might vibrate a little bit, especially if it's windy. Now for tripod heads, as I showed here on my uh, tripods, most of them has this uh, ball head. So a ball head is very, very useful for landscape photography um, and also long exposure photography, astrophotography, because you can move freely your camera with the, the ball head. You can move freely in all directions and also it will help to facilitate your composition. The advantages of a ball head is that it's less bulkier than this head here. This tripod head is a geared head. It's much bulkier and heavier, but it has its advantages, especially for architectural photography. So for architectural photography, it's really good because you can uh, change the uh, angle in each direction. 
So in three axes, really fast, really quick. And in architecture photography, you want to have your verticals aligned. So this tripod is really, really, really easy to do this. If you have a bow head, then you will struggle to find the right level of your camera. It, it's not very precise using a ball head for architectural photography. Of course, bigger tripods offer better stability, but it comes with a price. It's heavy. <laughs> but you can find good alternatives, good intermediate tripods, like this one that KNF Concept has sent me. This is really good because it's not heavyweight uh, and it's sturdy. This is sturdy. I have tried some long exposure photography with this tripod on the field and it's really, really good. It's very, very stable. And it. Uh, I think at this time I'm recording this video, this is the best tripod that I, I have ever tested. Depending on the year that you're watching this video, this might get outdated as the same videos that I posted here on the on my playlist. So uh, technology advance, tripods, uh, manufacturers change, uh, tripod technology also advances and they, they get lighter and there's new models. So I might want to do this video uh, again in the future. Other than that, you have tripod accessories. This tripod here, the 284C2, it has um, a rubber feet, but you can unscrew the rubber feet and it will have this aluminum spike here. It's threaded, it's very useful, but if you want to use a longer spike like this one, you just remove this one with this uh, Allen key and you can place this one. This is very, very useful. I'll leave a link here on the description of this video for this. These spikes are really useful when you are photographing seascapes, when you are on the sand and your tripod sinks. So it will provide a better stability, not only for seascapes, but also, for example, on, when you are on a mountain or in a region that has uh, that is windy, this will add uh, another degree of stability to your tripod because it can go deeper uh, into the soil. I know that defining a tripod for you to use is no easy task. So remember to take into consideration what is the total weight of your equipment, camera lenses, accessories, everything that goes above your tripod, where most of the time you will be using your tripod. Is it on uh, a studio? Is it on uh, doing architectural photography? Is it only doing landscape photography? Is it a tripod only for uh, travel? Do you like to go for long hikes? All of these will go as constraints for defining your tripod. If you want the most lightweight tripod, you might want to go with this one. But remember, there's no magic. It's smaller and its height is also very short. So unless you are you're very short, uh, if you're if you're a tall person, this might not be adequate for you, even if you have a lightweight camera and lens. And I don't recommend using this, uh, no matter what camera you have. I don't recommend using this for long exposure photography. You might face some stability issues. If you're doing a landscape photography, you can use any of these tripods, the 254C4. One thing that I didn't mention is there are two kinds of uh, quick release clamps like this one so you can just do like this close it like that and also you have the similar one which is the uh, d255c4 which is a screw one you can do this and close it here. It's really a matter of preference. So after this parenthesis, if you are uh, doing um, landscape photography work, you can use any of these uh, tripods, the 254C4. Uh, it's a carbon fiber tripod and has good stability. Also the D255C4, 
you can use this one, the uh, 254T1. This is an aluminum tripod. And this is uh, ideal for architecture photography or studio work. You can also use it in the field. But remember, this is one of the tallest tripods. It goes way beyond two meters height. Do you really need this? So think about that before deciding a, a kind of tripod. If you travel a lot and want a sturdy tripod and also a lightweight tripod, a good compromise, you can go for the two, uh, CS, the Artsys CS60C or the new one, the X284C2. This tripod here is amazing. It's simply one of the best compromise of uh, cost-benefit tripods I have ever tested. Another advantage of this tripod is that it's ball head. It has this uh, friction control where you can control your ball head friction with this knob here. This is very useful. Also, it's a 40 millimeter sphere, which is very good for stability and it can take up to 25 kilograms. And also we have for if you want the absolute sturdiness, you can go for the Artsys AS ADC. This is the sturdiest tripod ever. Of course, there are uh, other brands like Gitzo, uh, Manfrotto that have even more expensive tripods with even better stability, both, but also it comes with a cost. So this one for if you do long hikes, for example, I wouldn't recommend it. As of today, my main tripod for landscape photography, long exposure photography, travel photography will be this one, X284C2 from KNF Concepts. But this is for me. You need to define your own specific needs. I will leave a link here on the description of this video for each one of these tripods that I mentioned. And I will leave here on the screen an updated table that might be very very helpful for you to choose in your next tripod. I hope this video shed some light on how to choose an appropriate tripod for photography for you. If you like the video don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you aren't already and I will see you on the next video.